You've heard of the board game Candyland, right? Chances are, if you grew up in the last 70 years or so, you have probably have even played it. Candyland. Race on the rainbow path. You'll discover the gingerbread plum tree. Match colors, streets. And don't get stuck in molasses swamp. Playing Candyland is a child's dream. I remember wanting to eat everything on the board, especially the gumdrops, and loving Princess Lolly. I, Princess Lolly, am. Being terrified of Lord Licorice. Now it's time for my plan to begin. <laughs> it's an incredibly popular board game and still sells over a million copies each year. And in 2005, it was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame alongside Jack in the Box and has quickly become Milton Bradley's best-selling board game. Here's how to explore Candyland! Boy, this video is not about how great or how uninteresting Candyland is. And believe me, there are multiple subreddits and blogs online arguing about how boring this game is. No, this video is about the untold origins behind the Candyland board game. It has been said that some diseases do not take life, they just ruin it. We cannot let this crisis become a disaster. One of America's most vicious, crippling diseases. Okay, so I found the vintage 1955 edition of the Candyland board game. I tried to find the original version of when it just came out, could not find that one. So I'm gonna use this edition to play the game today. All right, so now I have my game set up. The rules are pretty straightforward. It's essentially a color matching game. So you have your cards right here and you draw a card and each card will have either an image or a color on them. And you essentially match the color on the card to the next color on the board. So I drew a purple, so I'm gonna move my little guy to the next purple. And off we go. Okay, so now it's post-World War II era. The US is victorious, the economy is thriving, and the baby boomer era is in full swing. Millions of returning veterans got married. Babies all over the map. Now TV has yet to be popularized as this widespread mode of entertainment. So you see the rise in introduction of these classic board games like Scrabble in 1948 and Clue in 1949. And among those popular board games is Candyland, introduced in 1949 by Milton Bradley. Earlier board games such as Sorry from 1934 and Monopoly in 1935 were also in wide circulation at this point. But those games required higher level skills such as reading and counting, whereas Candyland required none of the above. It literally says on the box, no reading or counting required. All you need to be able to do was recognize color. And for that exact reason, many people criticize Candyland for being too simple. While the game was officially introduced in 1949, it was actually designed a year earlier, in 1948, by Eleanor Abbott. And when she was in her 30s, she was diagnosed with polio. Poliomyelitis or polio is a debilitating infectious disease that mostly causes paralysis in children. The disease targets nerve cells in your spinal cord, leading to a loss of bodily control of your muscles, especially your leg muscles, but it can also affect muscles in your head, neck, and diaphragm. If a child gets polio in their diaphragm, then that patient will require a device called an iron lung, which help the child to breathe. At that time, the transmission of polio was poorly understood, and once you got infected, you were contagious for up to six to eight weeks. As you can imagine, this was not an easy life for anyone, especially a child. If you're wondering why the heck is she talking about polio and not Candyland, it will all make sense very soon. This is polio, and it is something for you to remember. One of America's most vicious, crippling diseases. 
Polio was a recurring epidemic from 1916 all the way to 1950. And in 1949, the same year that Candyland was introduced to the public, there were 42,173 cases reported in the United States. 1949's toll is the blackest in American history. The overwhelming flow of patients. The invasion was nationwide. For this is epidemic. If you look at this age distribution graph of polio in the United States, you'll see that children ages 0 to 15 were disproportionately affected. The vaccine for polio was discovered in 1952. But prior to that, the only way to contain the disease was to quarantine. Sound familiar? The only difference here is you weren't quarantining adults, you were mostly quarantining children. It has closed the gates on normal childhood. It has swept our beaches, stilled our boats, and emptied our parks. Think of the COVID lockdown. All those patients in hospitals forced away from their families for weeks on end. Except those patients are not adults, they're children, and they're kept in isolation for up to eight weeks. These are parents standing outside a hospital isolation ward, hoping for a glimpse of their stricken children. This is a fight to the finish of all parents. We must continue the fight with all our weapons, using every precaution to discourage contagion and the spread of infection. Unlike today, where you basically have unlimited parental visiting hours, back in the 1940s and 50s, hospitals kept children away from their parents. From the early 1900s to the late 1950s, most American hospitals continued to promulgate strict rules separating children from their parents, cloaking them in the language of science. In Johns Hopkins Hospital in 1946, one doctor recalled parental visiting hours were from 7 to 8 p.m. on Wednesdays and 1 to 2 p.m. on Sundays. One hour, two days a week. That's it. Thousands of children across the country were kept in these hospitals, away from their family, away from their friends. And this is truly where my appreciation for this game and its inventor, Eleanor Abbott, comes in. Eleanor Abbott was also recovering in a polio ward, suffering the same disease with other children in a San Diego hospital. It was here at this time where she was inspired to create the board game Candyland. After seeing these children in the iron lung, in wheelchairs, bedridden day after day with limited parental visits, if at all. Toy historian Tim Walsh in his book, Timeless Toys writes, she was uniquely qualified to understand their circumstances and equally fit to provide a fantasy world into which which they could escape. The entire game of Candyland was purposely designed to mentally stimulate the children who were stuck in polio wards. For example, children who were in the iron lung were laying on their backs 24-7, only able to look from side to side and up at the same tiled ceilings. So instead of the typical tiled board games like Scrabble, Eleanor Abbott opted for a colorful meandering ribbon that allowed both physical and mental stimulation just by tracing the ribbon with your eyes. Which remember, for children who are in the iron lung, their eyes were the most mobile part of their body. The original 1948 board game even depicted a child in a leg brace, a common post-polio prescription for muscle weakness. Polio children also engage in regular and regimented physical exercise to prevent further muscle wasting. So Candyland aimed to directly contrast that by simulating a leisurely stroll that emphasized joy in movement, free from any restrictions associated with polio. The milestones on the track, 127 miles, 92 miles, all the way to home, helped manufacture a sense of movement in a child's mind, something they didn't necessarily have as they were recovering from polio. And of course, there was candy. It was supposed to be this antidote to the helplessness that children faced while they were recovering in these hospitals. Okay, I know I started out this video talking about Candyland and it already took you on multiple tangents. And trust me, when I initially started out this video, it was going to be about Candyland and its inventor, Eleanor Abbott, and how it was created a polio award and all of that. But the more research and digging I did, 
I found something within Candyland that surprisingly resonated with me as an adult. And the reason it resonated with me so much is because it reminded me of our own quarantine in 2020. During the COVID pandemic, we found all these new ways to keep ourselves busy. We were playing online games with our friends. We were learning how to make sourdough starters. We were learning how to cut hair or not cut hair. We were all working from home at the same time, all in the sake of having some adventure in our life or at the very least having some stimulation mentally and emotionally. And now that the pandemic is over, we've grown out of that desire. My favorite quote about this game comes from the Atlantic article written by Alexander B. Joy. He writes, When children want a more challenging experience, they leave Candyland behind. And that, in the end, is what makes Candyland priceless. It is designed to be outgrown. Abbott's game originally taught children who were immobilized and separated from their families to envision a world beyond the polio ward, where opportunities for growth and adventure were endless. And that lesson still resonates today. Candyland teaches children how to imagine a world that is better than the one that they inherited. And as it has done for generations, this simple board game continues to send young children on the first steps of that journey. Thanks for watching. Bye.